Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing problem number 2695 array wrapper and that's going to be the next uh, problem in our JavaScript challenge. So in this problem you need to create a class array wrapper that accepts an array of integers in its constructor and it wants to have two features. When two instances of the class are added together with the plus the resulting value is the sum of all the elements in both arrays and when the string is called it needs to return a comma separated string surrounded by brackets for example one two three. And so in these examples, you can see that like if you add, it needs to add everything. And if you call to string, it needs to take the array, show all the elements, and then show these little brackets. That's all we're doing. So the way value of and to string works is the way value of works is if you call an instance of this class and you add it to something else, it will just take the, it will use this value of property to get that value. So when you do this uh, object one plus object two, it will say it will, under the hood, it already say object one dot value of plus object two dot value of. And then the way string works is it looks, is there a method in the array wrapper to convert this to string? And if there is, then it will convert it to string using that. Okay. So we're gonna just have a field in here that's gonna be like this dot nums equals nums. So we could actually access this. And now all we need to do is we need to somehow take all the numbers and return a value that's the sum of all the numbers. So there's a simple way we could do it, right? We could just have like a let result equals zero, and then we can loop through these. So you could say like let i equals zero, i is less than nums.length, i plus plus. You could say res plus equals, right? This dot nums i, this needs to be this. And you could do something like that, right? Where you're essentially looping through your array and you are adding all the numbers up and then finally we are returning. And similarly in the two string, we could do something similar where we can just say like, let's just get a string. So we could just say like, let's return a string that's, you know, a bracket plus, let's take our nums and let's actually convert nums into a string. So we want a string with all these numbers separated by comma. That's pretty straightforward, right? So we could do like this dot nums dot join and we could separate them with a comma. So essentially what's gonna happen here is if you have something like one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four. If you do this dot nums dot join, it will essentially join all these numbers and put commas in between them and make it a string. So it'll be like one, two, three, four. This will turn into this, and then we just need brackets to, to give it, you know, a string representation. So something like this would work, right? Should anyway. Oh, let's see here. Two, three, three. So, mm -hmm. um, what are we doing wrong here, actually? Let's take a look. So it is printing 233, and it should be giving this whole thing. Um, let's take a look. So this dot nums, this, is, this part's fine. But let's just print this dot nums just to make sure. Dot nums. Let's print that. Okay, so our console log is, uh, it's not even console log, that's interesting. Output, input string, output 233. Mm -hmm. That is Oh, it might be it might be that error that we had there with that array actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this was actually fine. We just had this array over here that was screwing it up. Okay, so essentially this does work, but let's think of some more clever ways to do this. Right, you could do it this way. Let's just think of others. So instead of adding this up in like a for loop, let's try to use a JavaScript method. And so we can actually use a method called reduce. And so what reduce does is we talked about this earlier. Was that essentially it has an accumulator and it has elements. And then you can just have it do some function. And then the accumulator can start at whatever value you want. So you could say like, let, let's let accumulator be zero. And let's just say in our function, we'll just say, let's just add the element to the accumulator, right? So essentially what's gonna look like for one, two, three, four, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have an accumulator, it's gonna equal zero. And then we're essentially adding every element to the accumulator one by one. So we're gonna say act plus equals the current element. So it'd be like act plus equals one, act plus equals two, act plus equals three, and so on. So this is essentially gonna give us the sum. 
And we could do this using reduce. So hopefully I get the um, syntax right. But essentially you do something like, I think you do the array dot reduce, and then you give it a function that takes an accumulator. And I believe it also takes an element. And then you return something, you know, whatever added to the accumulator typically. So you could say like, pack plus element. And so what this will do is this will actually take an accumulator and it'll take an element and it will return this and store it in the accumulator. And there's one other thing in the function that you need to give it. Uh, if you don't give it, it will default to zero. So actually, I think this will be fine because we do want our accumulator to start at zero. So I think something like this would actually work as well. Let's take a look. Reduce or empty array with no initial value. Maybe we do have to give it a... Uh, oh, I think we're actually missing... Yeah, let's actually give it an initial value. Maybe you do have to give it to it. All right, so that should work as well. So you can see this reduce also works and it's just a little bit cleaner, you know, not using a basic for loop, so. So reduce works as well and there's probably other ways of doing this, but this is like the main clean way, I guess. You could also use a for each, but that's essentially a for loop or like a for of, but that's just using different kinds of for loops. Okay, how do we do this one cleaner? Right, we can, we can do this join nums. What we could have also done was like the, the most brute force would have been a real for loop, right? You would just for loop all these things and you would just add the number and the comma into some string. So that, so that at least this is cleaner than that. But how do we, is there a better way to do this or is there a cleaner way to do this? So there actually is a cleaner way to do this. And the way it works is we could actually use this. So now what we can do is we can say, let's take a bracket and another bracket and in this thing right here, we can actually put this dot nums. And because we wrote it in here, if you give this an array, this will auto join all the elements in the array and it'll put the commas in for you. So essentially this part right here is gonna equate to, if you had one, two, three, four, it would give you one, two, three, four. And this is like the cleaner way of doing it where now we don't even need to use a join, we can just use this right here. And so, yeah, so let's try that. I think I talked about this in an earlier problem too, I recognize it's not super intuitive, but essentially, yeah, when you have an array, this will auto this will auto do this for you. There is one more way to do it, right? So there is also JSON stringify, if you wanna use that. That method will essentially do the same thing. Well, it will, it will take your array, it will create a string version with this array bracket thing. So if you do that, that also works. So all these ways work, you know, all these ways are pretty good, whatever you prefer, I'd say, probably either use this or, I mean, other join is whatever. And then for here, I'd probably stick with reduce just because using a clean, like just using a basic for loop, but, you know, if you have an interview question, you might as well do something a little bit more fancy, just so it shows more knowledge than a basic for loop. Or they might ask you like, how would you do this without using a basic for loop? Like, do you know any other functions? So it is good to know it, you know, I would say get familiar with reduce, get familiar with map, get familiar with filter, JSON stringify is good, dot join is good. And then also using the, uh, also using this as well is good, right? I forgot the name of that actually. I think it starts with a T, but anyway, uh, it'll come to me eventually. Okay, so I think that's gonna be it for this problem. And if you like the video, then please like it and please subscribe to the channel. And, oh, it's actually, I just remembered, it's called a template literal, okay. Yeah. So uh, if you like the video, please like it and please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.